I'm Olivia Vosnanko here with the CEO of Q Biomed, Dennis Corin, and he's going to tell us the latest developments in the biotechnology space. Hi, Dennis. Nice to have you on the show. Hey, Olivia. Nice to be with you. Thank you. So, Dennis, tell me a little bit about your company. So, Q Biomed is a biotechnology accelerator, we call ourselves, and the reason for that is uh, we've gone out and looked for underdeveloped or underappreciated assets in the biotechnology space, and we look at uh, look to find ways to accelerate the development of those assets towards some kind of monetization event or a catalyst that will drive re either revenue for us or really significant shareholder value for our shareholders and all the stakeholders within the company. And you have a lot of projects that you're working on, a lot of diseases to combat. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we've purposefully built our pipeline to have uh, several uh, therapeutic areas that we're investigating. Uh, they range from oncology with a liver cancer drug to all the way to an autistic spectrum disorder drug for very young children on the autistic spectrum disorder uh, spectrum that have uh, a very rare disease or a very rare affliction in that space, uh, a glaucoma drug as well, and also a pain palliation drug for pa patients that are suffering from debilitating cancer pain where it's spread to the bone. So several therapeutic areas, we call that sort of multiple shots on goal. Uh, so we're just looking for you know success in each of those areas and any one of those could be a major catalyst for us as well. How do they differentiate between the treatments of all those? Well, they're all very separate. So uh, these, you know, almost operate in separate silos within the QBiomed or under the QBiomed umbrella. Um, and uh, we have specific teams that work on each of those and also have some cross-pollination of ideas and expertise from our collaborators and uh, different scientists that work on all of those areas. So we have a corporate brain that's very diversified, but uh, everybody focuses, you know, in their lane, so to speak, as well. A lot of brain waves there, like you said. Uh, you just recently acquired a drug from GE. Why was that important for the company? Yeah, we think that's a tremendous strategic opportunity for us. So the, uh, the branded version of the drug is called Metastron. Uh, we have the global exclusive license on the generic version of the same drug. So we've really cornered that space in the market. Uh, the drug itself has been approved for some 20 odd years. Uh, it's a revenue generator for GE, but it's not really part of their focus. So GE is diversifying and uh, divesting a number of their business units, as I'm sure many of your listeners and, and uh, viewers know. Uh, so we managed to acquire the branded version of the drug. For, the, uh, for us, that's a great st uh, strategic move because it gives us access to 22 different countries where the drug is already approved. And that would have taken us a long time to get our generic into those markets and approved in those different areas. Uh, so it really springboards our opportunity to generate revenue on a global scale and kind of corners that market for us. And we're intending to invest quite heavily in the space. We think the drug hasn't been marketed uh, and has really been underappreciated in this new sort of um, non-opiate pain uh, palliation market. Uh, so that being a non-opiate drug, it's really important that we sort of remarket this drug to the clinicians and the patients and all the caregivers around these patients that are suffering terribly from the pain affliction of metastatic bone disease and uh, to be able to you know say hey this this is a really effective drug in that palliation space you don't need to be dosing your patients really heavily on opiates if you can give them a single injection of this uh, active ingredient it lasts about six months even up to a year sometimes so a really effective drug in that space so this is used for a particular type of bone cancer yeah, this is for metastatic disease, so uh, for, it could be multiple different primary tumors. It could be breast, prostate, lung, bladder cancer, where that uh, cancer is metastasized to the bone, and then it settles in the bone and starts to grow in the bone, and that's just hugely debilitating and excruciatingly painful. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a horrible condition to endure, and this is a very effective therapeutic. It just It's kind of been overlooked for the last several years, but as people start to relook at, you know, just heavily dosing opiates, uh, this is the sort of uh, a second-line therapy that we think is very, very we know it's very effective and we're just hoping that uh, we can bring that message back to that market. Tell me your latest developments with uh, treating nonverbal autism. Yeah, so this is a really interesting uh, therapeutic area for us. Uh, it's a sorely needed uh, therapeutic in the space. There are absolutely no drugs or no therapies available to these young kids. Uh, and it's a very sad, emotional uh, condition to endure. We've got very young children between the age of two and five uh, that are on the autistic spectrum and sort of slip into a deeper state of autism and they never really learn how to communicate or speak. Uh, so they become nonverbal completely or very minimally verbal. And then they grow up, you know, never having conversations with their parents, with their peers, their caregivers and unfortunately they then become you know nonverbal for the rest of their lives and that that puts a huge burden on them and their families they end up living in assisted living uh, facilities a lot of the
the time. Um, so it's just really difficult to deal with. But we believe that we can treat this condition really early on in very young kids at a very critical stage of their development, help them to ameliorate some of the conditions that are causing this nonverbal um, disorder, uh, allow them to learn to communicate and learn to speak. Uh, and then hopefully that would you know alleviate some of the stress on them and their parents and ultimately the healthcare system, which spends about $200 billion a year on this particular patient group. And how does that treatment go? Well, the idea here is to treat uh, these kids really early on with um, a drug that looks to uh, ameliorate migraines and seizures and different uh, conditions within the brain uh, that are causing these kids to sort of withdraw further into their autistic states. And as they do that, just like you or I, if you had a seizure or a migraine, you really wouldn't want to be in a communicative state. You kind of just withdraw further into yourself. You want to be in a cool, dark room and not have any external stimuli. Uh, so that's really what's happening to these kids on a constant basis. So we're trying to, we found a drug that uh, we believe will address this condition in the brain, ameliorate those migraines and those seizures, uh, reduce the inflammation in the brain and allow them to come out of their shells and learn to speak and communicate just like any normal uh, developmental child would. I have to say fascinating and, and quite unique developments that your company is making. What's next for QBiomed? Well, you know, we've only been around for three years, so we've developed this uh, pipeline really quickly. Uh, our objective as an accelerator is to find some of these really innovative products, uh, put them into our sort of uh, corporate brain, if you like, bring them the resources that they need, whether it's capital or strategic resources from people or partnerships or contract research organizations that can help accelerate their development. Uh, so that's this year is really going to be an important year for us. As, as you mentioned, we acquired the GE drug. We have the, um, the uh, generic version of that drug as well. We we aim to be commercializing that uh, this year in 2019, so this will be a revenue generating year for us, which is fantastic and quite unique in the small cap space here. Uh, the autism drug we're expecting to put into the clinical trial uh, program now in the summer of this year, which is really exciting. And that's going to be a 505B2 pathway, we expect, which means it's in a very accelerated uh, regulatory process. So within two years from about now, we could have a product uh, that's ready to go to market or to be applying for a, a new drug application. So uh, those are some really significant milestones. And in the rare disease space, in that autism space, you know, that's a multi-billion dollar opportunity for a small company like us. There's only about 50,000 kids around the world. Uh, annually that are diagnosed with this condition. So it's a very rare disease that gives us access to orphan drug status and fast track within the FDA and some of the regulatory bodies around the world. Uh, and just a huge opportunity to bring something that's sorely needed to these patients. Well, it takes a great business mindset to be so proactive with all these activities and developments. Congratulations on your success. We hope to have you on the show again to talk about them. Thanks so much for having me, Olivia. Thank